For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. This is by far one of the most famous verses in all of Christianity. We see it on t-shirts, coffee mugs, keychains, on homemade signs in the end zones of NFL football games. And my personal favorite is on bumper stickers because there's nothing like getting cut off on the, on the road and then having that horn blown at you and then to look up and see that bumper sticker in front of you, John 3, 16. It's like they're saying, hey, I almost ran you off the side of the road, but remember, God loves you. The popularity of this verse shows us that we as the church love this passage. We love John 3, 16. But why? Why do we love this verse so much? I think many of us do because we believe it points us to everlasting life, something we will get in the future because, yes, God does indeed love us. But when we look at the text in its entirety, there is so much more than that. There is more to this verse than simply waiting for that which is to come. The context of this passage is a conversation Jesus is having with Nicodemus, the Pharisee who comes to Jesus at night to learn more about him. John says he was coming in the darkness of the physical night, but here John is also talking about Nicodemus' own spiritual darkness, how he is not quite fully grasping the kingdom that Jesus is ushering into this world. At this point, Nicodemus has seen glimpses of God's kingdom, but he wants to know more. He comes to Jesus in darkness, seeking answers and searching for the truth. And he's actually looking for the light. He just doesn't know it yet. And so during their conversation, Jesus points Nicodemus to the love of God and to the cross. When Jesus talks about the Son of Man being lifted up, he is talking about himself and his own crucifixion. And Jesus connects the cross and his death to God's love. On that cross, when Jesus himself is lifted up, the love of God would be shown to all people. An eternal life that flowed from that cross was offered to all the world. For Nicodemus to truly grasp what Jesus' kingdom was all about, he had to look to the cross first and see its meaning. The cross was the power of God to defeat death. It was the event that would show the depth of God's love and was the invitation for Nicodemus to receive the life he was longing for by simply believing in the forgiveness that was offered to him by God's grace through his own faith. Nicodemus was longing to know God and God's fullness, and for that to happen, Jesus pointed him to the future, to experience God's love as it was poured out for him and for all on the cross of Jesus Christ. But the thing is, Jesus doesn't end here. He doesn't end with 316. He doesn't tell Nicodemus that God loves him, hand him a bumper sticker, and then send him on his way. Because there was more to the story. And there was more for Nicodemus to learn about God's kingdom in the here and the now. And not just by looking to what was to come in the future. As the passage continues, Jesus teaches Nicodemus about the reality of this life the light and the darkness, and the evil and the good. Though God's kingdom had come into this world through Jesus, at times the world still wanted to cling to the darkness of its own sin, of its own brokenness, and not walk into the light that is experienced through a transformed life with God. A journey that requires one to change their life. This was the response to God's love that Jesus was offering to Nicodemus, an invitation to leave behind the attitudes, the behaviors, the habits, the way of thinking and seeing that did not resemble the kingdom of God, and to walk fully into God's grace. At that moment, Nicodemus was at a decision point in his own life. If he was truly going to understand and see the kingdom of God, he couldn't stay where he was. He had to walk from his own darkness, trusting that Jesus would lead him into God's light. He had to leave behind the world that he knew and walk forward into the kingdom that Jesus was creating. And it was a decision that required Nicodemus to change his direction 
and by doing so, to change his life. Through this season of Lent, we are journeying to the cross. And on Good Friday, we will hear the story of Christ's death, where Jesus is lifted up for all the world. And through that cross, we will know the depth of God's love for all people and how God's eternal and transformed life will be offered to all that believe in him. Until then, each of us, like Nicodemus, have the time to think about our own lives. We have the time to examine our places of spiritual darkness that are in need of God's light shining in us. And like Nicodemus, we cannot stay where we are. Through the season of Lent, we are given the space to think about our own response to the cross and what it means for us to walk in the light of God's love. And most importantly, we have this season to focus on where we are now and the life that God is leading us to. In her book, The Liturgical Year, author Joan Chittister says that every year the Sundays of Lent plunge us into the center of the faith reminding us of who we are and who we must become. The story of Nicodemus reminds us of who we are. Each one of us are loved by God so much that he would send Jesus, his only son, into our sin and our brokenness to die on the cross so that we may believe and receive his abundant and eternal life but it's also a story that reminds us of who we must become. Those who are willing to follow Jesus into the light, leaving behind our spiritual darkness so we can live as God has created us to live. And like Nicodemus, it will require us to change our direction and to change our lives. As we continue to travel to the cross, may this story be our guide and may we follow the path of Nicodemus. Let us seek Jesus in our darkness and be willing to follow him into the light of God's love. Amen.